Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you the measurements that I use when I'm forging my own tongs. I've been getting a lot of questions about this lately and it's a little too involved to be answered in a, the comments section or in an email so hopefully this video will answer some of your questions. I've used a lot of different techniques and a lot of different stock sizes for making tongs over the years but for this video I'm going to focus on just one bar stock and that is the 5 8 square bar. It's heavy enough to make a good sturdy pair of tongs but it's light enough that it's easily forged by hand if that's all you have to work with. Today I'm going to try to cover the major groups of tongs that are out there. These are the basic shapes that you're going to see. So once you understand you know, how those are made, you should be able to figure out all of the different variations that are based on those shapes. The first pair of tongs that you need to figure out are the standard flat bit tongs. They are the foundation for all the other tongs that you're going to make. Standard flat bit tongs have two jaws that are identical. Here I'm laying out the jaws with an inch and a half offset and I'm forging them out to roughly two inches. These aren't exact measurements, they're just an approximation. The important thing to concentrate on is the shape of the jaws. They start off very thick close to the hinge area and they taper away from that point. The middle drawing is showing the top view of the tong jaw and you can see how it's basically just forged into a chisel point. The bottom drawing on this page shows a simple variation that will give you basically needle nose pliers. You know, they're handy for picking up stock and handling material and for reaching into tight spaces, you know, for uh, shapes that are awkward to hang on to. Another variation that I do with this same offset is making a really heavy pair of ring tongs that I use mainly for holding chisels and punches. So I keep the inch and a half offset for making large ring tongs that can hold you know, larger shanks and then I just cut it back to whatever I need to hold you know, smaller and smaller diameter shanks for chisels. Ring tongs are used to hold bar stock across the face of the jaws. So here again you can see how they're just a standard pair of flat bit tongs with the ends of the jaws altered to fit whatever bar stock you're working with. I make two versions of this. The standard ring tong has the curved jaws on both upper and lower jaw and I make a variation where I replace one of those with a straight jaw. The version with the straight jaw I find a little bit easier for picking up work in the fire, but the double curved jaw definitely holds the work more securely. Hoop tongs are bent flat bit tongs that are used to hold flat bar that are sitting across the face of the jaws. They're not complicated to make, but you do have to pay attention to how the reins are oriented when you're bending the jaws. Also take note that the jaws are shaped very differently and they are using two different offsets. Curved bit tongs are usually used for handling hot work and I quite often call them pickup tongs because they're great for getting small pieces out of the fire and that sort of thing. They're generally not used for forging. They have long slender jaws so I'm starting off with a 3 inch offset here. These tongs are a little confusing to make because if you want the both jaws to be pointing in the same direction once they're assembled you have to forge them in two different directions so I usually assemble the finished pair of tongs with straight jaws and then I heat up the whole jaw section and curve them the way that I want. Box tongs are again basically a flat bit pair of tongs that have one jaw that have been modified so that it can wrap around a piece of flat bar. The top jaw is just a standard flat bit jaw that is made with a 2 inch offset. 
The bottom jaw, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated to make. The main part of the jaw needs to be forged out without touching any of the material at the end of the bar. That material needs to be cross-peened out to at least an inch and a quarter in width so you have enough material to form the box that wraps around the piece of flat bar. I use this design for bar stocks that are up to three quarters of an inch wide. Standard box tongs are used to hold wider pieces of flat bar and for these tongs the jaw that's holding the box is usually assembled in two pieces. Both jaws are forged with a two and a half inch offset. One jaw gets left as a straight uh, standard jaw and the bottom jaw gets uh, the end shaped to fit around the stock that's going to be used to form the box. The bottom drawing shows a variation made with a 3 inch offset. It has a curved jaw so it can reach around something on the uh, flat bar like a hinge barrel or some other obstacle that it needs to work around. The standard bolt tong is probably the pair of tongs that I use the most. Uh, they're great for holding round or square stock and the open section at the back end of the jaws is really handy for f working with odd shaped pieces of metal. Both jaws start off with a 3 inch offset and both of the jaws are forged in exactly the same way. Here again with these jaws you need to be able to forge out the main part of the jaw while reserving some material at the end to cross peen the shape for the end of the bolt tongs. Fortunately you don't need to leave as much material as you did for the small box tongs but you still need to leave enough so that when it cross peens out it's roughly the same thickness as the main part of the jaw. The curved section of the jaw usually gets shaped around a mandrel that has a one and a half inch diameter. I also make a smaller version of bolt tongs and for this I use 5 8 round bar instead of 5 8 square bar. I start out with a two inch offset but beyond that the process is exactly the same. It's just a smaller pair of tongs that's more suitable for handling smaller bar stocks. And the jaws of these tongs get shaped around a one inch mandrel. And finally I'm going to end up with some basic theory. I'm thinking if you're still with me at this point you're probably going to be interested in this. What you're looking at here is a very, very cleaned up version of the chicken scratch drawings that I use to just make some basic calculations for starting points for stock sizes. I always start out by making a list of the volumes per inch of the starting bar stocks and the dimensions of the finished bar stocks that are going to wind up in the forging. What you see here is a list of the volumes of all the common square bars that you're likely to be using. So by simply looking at a list like this, you can start to make some assumptions that are actually pretty accurate. Say for example you had some 3 quarter inch bar and you needed to hammer it down to half inch, so you know right away by looking at the numbers that you're going to get twice as much half inch bar as the 3 quarter inch bar that you started out with. And you see basically the same relationship between the half inch bar and the 3 8 bar. If you need to be more accurate, you simply divide the larger number by the smaller number. So in this case, you're going to get something that's pretty close to 2.0 something. To calculate the volume for any four-sided bar stock is exactly the same. It's side 1 times side 2 times the overall length. The formula for round bars is a little bit more involved, but it's still easy enough. 3.14 is pi, you may remember that from school, and that gets multiplied by the square of the radius, which basically just means that you multiply the measurement for the radius by the, itself, and that gets multiplied by the length. So the volume is the standard unit that you're looking for. Once you have them all figured out, you can compare any bar stock with any other bar stock.
And of course, these volume calculations would be exactly the same if you're working in metric. The reason I didn't include those here is because I know that bar stocks are sold slightly differently in Europe than they are here. So I didn't want to post numbers that would be used to get inaccurate results. When I'm figuring out bar stock, I don't worry about the forge section, the tapers, or you know any of the details. I just try to find a standard bar stock that kind of averages out whatever I'm doing. So here you see the standard bar stock that I'm going to be using for the jaws of the tongs. And the curved line, the dotted line in the drawing, is basically how it's going to be forged out. So you can see how there's areas that are low and areas that are high, but in general the straight bar stock covers what I'm going to be doing in this forging. So you can see how you don't need to get too carried away to get fairly accurate results. And you see the same thing here when I figured out what I wanted for the reins. I started off with a heavier 3 8 by half section and I wanted that to transition to a 3 8 inch square bar, basically. I didn't bother figuring out the volumes for the tapers or any of that stuff. I just stuck in a short 3 8 by half uh, square bar that takes care of that first transition and then I tacked on a 3 8 square bar on the end of that. And again, you just follow the dotted line to see what the actual forging is. It's not accurate from an industrial forging point of view, and if you're a machinist, you're probably tearing your hair out by now, but it's plenty accurate for what we're doing. We'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Dennis, and thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can contact me by using the email address that I have shown here. If you like the channel and the work that I'm doing, please consider becoming a patron. Every dollar you contribute will bring me one step closer to being able to produce videos full time.